So, I know I'm looking pretty crazy, let my hair grow out. It's not combed, I'm not showered, all that good stuff. I'm trying to get some coffee, but this little cutie will not let me do so. So, I'm going to be waiting for a little bit, um, but anyway. <laughs> for 2024, I've let some things go. It's not been easy. But really, it is easy when you love the Lord. See, it's, it's not that hard to give something up. Because it's like, when you've been going through something so long, especially if you've fallen back into something, and you've experienced God, you've experienced what a relationship with Him looks like, you have the Word at your disposal. I'm not placing judgment on anybody who's saying, oh, you're weak, or you're strong, or whatever. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, if you really love the Lord, and you've been through torment, and you've been through whatever, homelessness, death, near-death experiences, emotional, mental torment, and all kinds of different forms, social, whatever, physical, spiritual, you know what I'm talking about, and you've made it out, so you and I both know that you can get through those withdrawals, those, I'm going through withdrawals right now, my whole body's shaky, but I'm good, I'll be good in four days, you know, um, three or four days it'll subside am i afraid of judgment from anybody that's watching this video i'm really not because i have the joy of the lord and the lord has restored let's see david said return to me the joy of my salvation because he couldn't feel it in his emotions he was so in remorse about his sin that he was just like i need the joy back please give me the joy back If we really love the Lord and we're honest with ourselves, we can decide to have a compromised heart. Like it says in the Bible, it says some people's hearts were fully dedicated to the Lord. And then some, like Solomon, his heart was divided. God didn't say it wasn't for him at all. Part of his heart was. But part of his heart was towards now the idol worship and the women, the hundreds of women that he had at his disposal. And sadly, I have to say it like that because Solomon was objectifying these women just like we do in, in the culture now. He didn't look at, at, at them to have a relationship, but to sit down with them, listen to them, have conversations, care about their feelings, and be dedicated to one woman. No, he just took as many as he could because he was horny and he was lustful. That's the reality of it. So the Lord said that your heart is divided. It started off with the Lord. Like it says in the New Testament, you started off great. Y'all started off well. Paul was preaching in the churches. Y'all started off great. What happened? How did you get caught up again? How did you get entangled? Well, I've been there. Many of you have been there. But are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you willing to go through those withdrawals? Are you willing to go through those sometimes all night in prayer, bro? Like, th these are Christians in China, right? But we're Christians in America saying, yeah, we can just keep on sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning, but we can also have God at the same time. God's grace covers us, so we never have to acknowledge Him. We never have to pray to Him. We never have to be serious about this thing or read our word. We love God, but we don't do what He says. So that just makes everybody else around you think that, yeah, you're good. It's all good. Nothing nothing else happens, has to happen. But the Bible says that the demons know about Jesus Christ too and shudder in fear. We don't have to fear if we're on the right side, if we let the things go that we know we need to let go. You can message me too if you're struggling with something. We can at least pray together. The Bible says pray for one another that you may be healed. That's a promise. We've got all these promises in the Bible. Do we care enough to let the things go that God doesn't want in our life that are hindering us? Because the reason that most of us are having financial struggles, physical, emotional, mental, and everything else is, first of all, is because we tolerate sin in our own houses and in the houses of our body, and we keep doing the same things that we know we're not supposed to be doing. So of course it's going to be a mess. Of course it's going to be a mess. 
I mean, the Bible talks about it shouldn't be a strange thing. We're wondering, oh my gosh, what's happening to me? I, well, come on now. From everything that I've just said, the Bible already tells us how things go. If you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. Okay, persist in good, and good will follow. Persist in evil, or tolerance of evil, then yeah, you're going to be all tore up from the floor up. And people will say, well, you're judging, you're this, you're that. No, I'm not. I just confessed all of mine. I just confessed that I just let some things go on this first of 2024. But when I come with a passion like this, and the Holy Ghost fills me up with fire again, and light, and I start speaking, that's when people say, you're preaching fear, you're a false prophet. That's okay. Check with the Word of God. It's in there. I have a relationship with Him. I've been messed up for a long time. I've been wishy-washy for a long time. But 2024 doesn't look like wishy-washy. Okay? It looks like abundance. In the spirit first, I'm not concerned about material items, but I know what's coming towards me. I already know. I'm just in a texting phase. I haven't been paid since the 17th because I missed my pay cycle the 15th because it's a two-week pay cycle. So that means I don't get anything for the 25th. That's already passed, right? I got $23, bro. I'm still doing hours and hours and hours and hours of training on my computer. I'm gonna turn them in soon. And then I'll get maybe another $30, $40. Maybe. Until my big check on the 10th. But I gotta wait till the 10th. I gotta have faith till the 10th. Okay? So, it's very simple. Just let go of the things that you gotta let go of, or at least start fighting. At least start fighting. Resist for an extra 10 minutes, an extra 15 minutes, whatever. But you gotta start making steps, because the reality is, just like Einstein said, I don't really like to make quotes and stuff like that, but I guess I'm just flowing in the spirit. But he said you can't keep expecting to do the same thing with different results, what, it's just gonna fall off? Yes, that does happen sometimes. It does. It does. Okay, but if I'm just staring at a wall all day, is that wall gonna get painted? Probably not, bro. I'll at least have to pick up my phone, make a phone call if I don't want to pay it, and be like, hey, can you come paint this? I'll pay you, or I'll trade you something for services, or goods, or whatever. You still have to do something. Like we join with the Lord, we're, we're, if we're co-heirs with Him, we're also co-servants with Him. Fellow servants serving the world as salt that preserves the earth. The only thing that's preserving the earth is the Spirit of the Lord and His children in it. And just so you know World Economic Forum and everybody else that's watching me and assigned to me because I know how this works. I will not bow to your RFID chip card. I will not bow to vaccines or mRNA. I will not bow to the evil agenda and tolerance of this sex culture and this secular music and everything else that's making the kids angry and everything else. Kill their families, go into schools and start shooting. This stuff adds up. This is why this stuff happens. And I will not bow you elites, you governmental authorities, to anything that goes against the word of God. You can slay me, you can kill me, torture me, whatever. I've already seen all that stuff. It's promised in the Bible too. Not saying it's going to happen or not going to happen, but I will not bow or comply in Jesus' name. And neither should you. We need to be close to the Lord. We need to make a decision. Who will you serve today? I choose Jesus.